All right, with the ninth pick of the second round of the Mock It Up Before You Fuck It Up rookie draft presented by the FF Dynasty. Find us on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. Welcome Casey back. Myers, who you got? <laughs> Picking for Samaje Toi, the best team name of this league. That's my squad. That's up for debate, but whatever. Took Paris Campbell at 1 9. Who you got at 2 9? Did take Paris Campbell. Uh, well, you know, board's. Uh, Board's drying up a little bit of, of all the <laughs> picks that you're super excited about. Leaned on um, some Sternberger, and that's who I went with. 2-9. Going Sternberger. Going Sternberger. Little little premium. Uh, Could have taken Justice Hill. Uh, Could have thrown in there some Deontay Johnson. Uh, but I'm going to stick with Sternberger in the premium here. Uh, this is a... Who do you have on... Who, who's your... Uh, I got Austin Hooper. You got Hooper. That's who it is. I got so you Ian got Hooper Thomas. and you got Ian Thomas, who I, I like as a prospect. Got Herndon. Um, and then Herndon down there, who now that Gase is in there, I like a whole lot less. Um, it's, just, it's hard to like any skill position player that Gase is coaching, <laughs> just, right? Just didn't love it. And then they, they drafted a tight end who is a pretty decent blocker. And so so we'll, we'll kind of see how that, that plays out. So you got you got a, a got couple, ASJ. Of, couple of stabs there. And, and we all like Hooper and we, we really... Want Hooper to be a guy that we can lean on in, in fantasy, but I, I don't think he's quite there as, as the guy that you want to be uh, 100% leaning on every week, week in, week out last year. in your uh, tight end premium league. So I went ahead and I, I added another tight end to the mix here. Don't hate it. I put Sternberger in there. And obviously Jimmy Graham there. We talked a little bit about it on this last pick, but they didn't add any forgot, receivers. forgot about Jimmy Graham there for a second. <laughs> They didn't add any receivers over there, um, and you're getting a whole new offense tailored uh, to a little bit more Aaron Rodgers and a little bit more of uh, Matt LaFleur. of the floor. Uh, so they're going to tag team this thing, and it should be a little bit more fun, and Aaron Rodgers should be a little bit more involved and more yeah. excited week in, week out to go out there and, and do what he wants to do. That's and, what you're looking for. Uh, Sternberger is a, is a piece of that moving forward, I hope. Um, this is definitely a stab, but again, it's premium, so you got to elevate the tight end a little bit. It's a, it's a tough position in general to to find a week in week out starter, and I, I really just I like the receiving ability of Sternberger. Is is he the best blocker? No. Is he a complete liability at blocking? No. No way. Um, I think he's he's half decent. He was Texas A and M's receiving offense uh, in this last year, which was pretty much his only productive college year. Uh, but he transferred from Kansas, and uh, he was there in 15 and 16. And I think he had to sit out in 17, maybe, and then played 18, had 10 touchdowns, had the most receptions on the team. He was their leading receiver. He's just a just another receiver out there for Aaron Rodgers that's going to be a mismatch for somebody. He um, looks like a wide receiver. Yeah, he's he's pretty silky smooth. He's got really solid hands. Um, yeah, so. made a ton of very difficult catches over the middle Right before getting popped, like yeah. very impressive, uh, what what you're able to see. Only three drops last year, ranked 20th in drop rate. So there's a good number there. Fine. Yeah, he and he had way more targets than most tight ends. Right. Like he's up there getting like 80 some targets, and the rest of the tight ends are down. And like if you got a good year, if you had 30 or 40 catches, you 80, know, 82 targets. So right, that's, and and that's one of the things that Casey was liking and talking to us about Sternberger in the middle of the football season. And normally it's till the end of the season or after before names really start popping around. And uh, Jace Sternberger was somebody that Casey was bringing up early and often. Well, when you the watch season. the Travion mm -hmm. tape, you hear Sternberger a lot. Yeah, it was their whole offense outside of Tra Travion was their offense and Jace was their offense. So yeah. Right. Um, He's, he, I think he definitely looks fast out there, faster than his uh, yeah. fifty-seven percent high did adjusted speed score. You necessarily know test very well, but I mean, there's not <laughs> that many I mean? tight ends that go blow it out the water. Um, so I like six four two fifty one. I'm in eight point two yards after the catch per completion. That's a that's a stronger number than most receivers that are going in this class. Right. So a lot of if, if him and if him and. Uh, him and a Rod Rogers in there, and if him and a Rod can boom, develop boom. a little bit of chemistry, and that can be a guy that he he likes to find on the field, then you're in business here, and it's a home run uh, pick. Yeah, I think I like this. I think I like him more than Irv. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm definitely giving Jace a tick above Irv. 
All right. The public doesn't feel that way, which this is why I'm okay with taking Irv and maybe getting a little ah, bit more value back. I but, don't know what to do about what the public thinks. Well, so it's just it's Get good. Your own it's podcast, good when, then. Well, it's good when when the value is in your favor, and it definitely in all the rookie drafts that I've been in, Sternberger is usually a, a good bit behind Irv Smith, meaning that mostly the public is yeah. definitely a little bit more into what Irv has going on. Well, he's an Alabama guy. Yeah, but I'm I'm going with my guy Jace. All right, let's uh let's keep trucking along here.